Today being Independence Day, this is a special day. And the theme for this morning is being grateful to God for freedom, responsibly serve the society. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. So there are two parts to this theme. Being grateful to God for freedom, that's the first part. Responsibly serve the society, the second part. When we look at the first part, being grateful to God for freedom, we are reminded of the text that was read from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 20 to 25. However, to get a larger context of what is said in Deuteronomy 6, 20 to 25, let us read Deuteronomy 6, verses 10 to 12. There it is written, And when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you with great and goodly cities which you did not build, and houses full of good things which you did not fill, and cisterns hewn out which you did not hew, and vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant, and when you eat and are full, then take heed lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. We have completed 74 years of independence. And in the story in the book of Deuteronomy, the people of Israel were being liberated. They had come out of bondage, and now they were on the way to enter the promised land. And this is what the word of God says in Deuteronomy 6.12. Then take heed, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of bondage. So, the first part of our theme today says, let us be grateful to God for the freedom given to us. Sometimes as we grow old, we forget the act of salvation in our lives that God has brought in. And similarly is this case with the people of Israel, that as they were going to enter in the promised land, Subsequently, they did it. They settled themselves. They were in the land flowing with milk and honey. There was abundance of food. There was a lot of prosperity. And in that situation, they forgot God. There was a newly married couple. And uh, they were staying in a city which was far away from the place where the bride came from. And the husband used to often tell his newly wedded wife, you know, I have to travel every day by bus and by train. It takes up a lot of time and it's quite a hassle. How I wish we had a car. Now, when this newly married wife heard her husband saying, how I wish we had a car. She thought, I must show my love for him. Back at home, she had a bank account and there was sufficient money there. Now, this, this was the time before internet banking and other things came in. So she would have to go and withdraw the money from the bank back at home. So without telling her husband, she said, honey, why not we visit? my parents over the weekend 
and uh, we can have a good time together with my family. So both husband and wife, they travel all the distance by train, by bus, and they reached the wife's place. And then she immediately went to the bank and got the money out. And then in the afternoon, she said to her husband, let's go to an automobile showroom, which is near my house. Let us look at the cars there. Maybe one day God will grant us a car like that. So the husband was very thrilled because he was interested in getting a car. So they went to that automobile showroom and they started looking at the different cars. Then the wife said, which one of these would you like to drive? And the husband said, that one. And then she said, sit in it and see how it feels. So he got into the car and started it and he had such a great joy, thrill. If this were my car, I would be so happy. Then his wife said, my dear, I am gifting this car to you. The husband was shocked. What? He says, yes, here's the money in my bag. And she said, honey, I will just go to the counter to make the payment and do the needful to own this car. So she went to the counter to pay money and get all the documents there. In the meantime, the husband was so thrilled with getting this car. He said, let me drive it a little distance. And then he started it off. And then he said, how will it look on the highway to my home? And so he got onto the highway and started driving. And he said, okay, it's so great. Let me go ahead, let me go ahead. And he drove five hours down the highway and he said, oh, I have forgotten something. And then it struck him, he had forgotten his wife who was still there at the counter to pay the money. And then he immediately got off at the next town and called his wife and he said, I'm so sorry, I'm coming back to fetch you. This drives home the point that very often we get so caught up, we get so caught up with blessings that we forget to thank the one who has blessed us. Imagine that husband's embarrassment when he reached back to bring his wife home. It was very humiliating. Same thing. The word of God says, when God has brought you to freedom out of the house of bondage, do not forget God, lest you get so caught up with your prosperity. And that is a lesson for us that it is God who should be thanked for our freedom, for our independence. You will notice that in many national anthems of different countries, there is a reference to God. Perhaps they all sing the national anthem as an anthem. But interestingly, some of these anthems are actually prayers. Look at the anthem of Uganda. The anthem begins with the first line, O oh, Uganda, may God uphold thee. We lay our future in your hand. So it begins, the anthem begins with, O oh, Uganda, may God uphold thee and our future is in your hand. Look at the national anthem of Nigeria. Nigeria begins again. The anthem begins as a prayer. Oh God of creation, direct our noble cause. Guide our leaders right. 
help our youth the truth to know. So that's a beautiful prayer that this national anthem is. O God of creation, direct our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youth the truth to know. Look at the national anthem of South Africa. It starts with a prayer again. Lord, bless Africa. May her glory be lifted high. Hear our prayers, Lord. Bless us, your children. Lord, we ask you to protect our nation. National anthems are prayers to God. Now, sometimes, you, maybe this morning, many of us have already sung the national anthem. What is your national anthem? You say, ah, Janagana Mana. But have you really thought that this entire national anthem is a prayer to God? We are missing on that. We are so con concerned about standing straight, saluting, but it's a prayer. You know, when we say, Jana Gana Mana, what are you saying? You are the ruler of the minds of people. Jana, people, mana, mind, gana. You are the ruler of the minds of people. Then what do we say? Bharat Bhagya Vidhata. Bharat, our country, Bhagya destiny, Vidhata. God, you are the destiny of our country. So that's a prayer. And it's a very strong prayer because it says, Oh God, your name, your name rouses the beauty of Punjab of sin and so many places. Your name echoes in the hills of the Vindhyas and the Himalayas. Your name mingles in the music of the Jamuna and the Ganga. And then what does it say? Tava Shubha Name Jage. Tava Shubhanam. Tava, yours, Shubhanam. Auspicious name. Jage. Wake us up. Wake us up to the auspicious blessing of your name. And it goes on to say, uh, Tava Shubha Ashishimage. Again, we are talking to God. Tava, your. Shubha Ashish, your good blessings, holy blessings, Mange, we ask for your holy blessings. And then, Janaga, now, you are Mangaladayak. You are the saving of the people. You are the savior of the people. Hmm? And our salvation lies in your hands. And so, Bharat Bhagya Vidhata, you are the destiny of our country. Jai Ho, Jai Ho. This Jai Ho is not to the country. The Jai Ho is to God. But we are missing this whole prayer element. When Rabindranath Tagore first wrote this, he wrote a long poem. But the title of that poem was Bharato Bhagyo Vidhata. So, Bharato Bhagyo Vidhata. A prayer to God, who is the destiny of our country. And therefore, being grateful to God for freedom. This is an important dimension. Let us not forget that freedom that we have received. 
then what happens? There's a danger. Instead of being grateful to God for the freedom, we distort our freedom history. We distort, we give a new interpretation of our freedom. And you notice that in Deuteronomy itself, chapter 8, verses 11 to 14. Deuteronomy 8, 11 to 14. Take heed, lest you forget the Lord your God, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses and live in them, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the house of bondage. And then Deuteronomy 8, 17, beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. So a twist. My power and the might of my hand have gotten me all this. My freedom, my prosperity in this country. That is the danger. We distort history. Instead of giving glory to God, we give glory to ourselves. But remember, Bible says very strongly, God, all movements for freedom are inspired by God. We have the famous passage in Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. I have come down to deliver them. And how was God going to do it? Do the movement which Moses was to initiate, a movement for liberation. God is engaged in movements of liberation. Amos chapter 9, verse 7, where God is talking to the Israelites and says, Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, says the Lord? Have I not brought up Israel? out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaftar and the Syrians from Kir. So here, this verse is talking of three liberation movements. First is, God has brought Israel from the land of Egypt. That's one. Number two, he has brought the Philistines from the land of Kaftar. Today, we would call Kaftar as the island of Crete. So the Philistines were people living in that island. They were in whatever suffering they were, and God delivers them from the land of Crete and brings them to their present dwelling. And similarly, God was engaged in the liberation of the Syrians from Kir. Syrians or the Arameans, they were liberated from their oppression in the land of Kir. So therefore, God is engaged in liberation movements of different countries. Let us not distort. Let us not distort this history. Let us not take the glory to ourselves, that is pride. And then, of course, in today's India, there is a deeper problem. The deeper problem is that we are distorting our history. Our history books are being rewritten to give glory to a particular community, a particular race, and a particular religion. 
on 9th August, our great leader said, we must make the youth understand the history of the Quit India movement. How our people fought for getting our independence. But then, some other wise people wrote, let us also make our youth understand that in that Quit India movement, there were certain groups who were opposed to the Quit India movement, and these were Indians who were against the Quit India movement. But we can distort history by saying we got independence, though you were not at all engaged. I mean, you've got to be very clear, we are living in difficult times. What does it mean when yesterday, our great leader said, from today onwards, every 14th August will be declared as a day of horror of the whole migration that took place, the day of horror. Now, what happens when we say that it is going to be called the day of remembrance of partition horrors. So we have to be clear about it. It's the day when Pakistan celebrates its independence, 14 August. We are bringing another version on 14 August as the day of the horrors of, Pakistan, of India. And so where is the gun pointing to? It is creating ill will with our neighbors. So the day of horrors of partition, every year we are going to remember this. When our neighbor is celebrating Independence Day. Then you remember that it is also said by the government that all those coming from outside, except one particular community, they who are refugees will not be given citizenship, but rest will be given citizenship. Those who are persecuted, whether they are persecuted in Pakistan or Bangladesh, if they belong to some communities, they will be in, others will be out. So we are distorting history. We are distorting that large India history. When there was no Pakistan, no Bangladesh, we were all one big nation. That history is being distorted and we take up other things. And so it is in this context that we've got to remember God for the freedom God has given us. And so the second passage that we have from the epistle to the Galatians, it talks about living responsibly. How do we live responsible is exhorting us that we should live as people who are free and should not again submit ourselves to a yoke of slavery. Galatians 6 1. If you look at it, uh, sorry, he says, I'm missing that point. Uh, brethren, here it goes, um, I'm misquoting it, but I will get that quotation later on. He says that you have to, you have to be people who do not submit themselves to the yoke of slavery, Galatians 5.1. Christ has set us free, stand fast therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. So if you have been made free, do not submit yourself to the yoke of slavery. What does this mean? Freedom is something to be valued. This freedom should not be sacrificed. During the American Revolution, these were the famous words of a man called Patrick Henry. 
Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. I want freedom. If I don't have freedom, I'd better die. I cannot be a slave anymore. Now, Patrick Henry was talking about freedom. He was talking about civil liberties. He was standing for liberty for all, whether they be whites or blacks, standing for liberty for all. And therefore, he said, if we are going to engage ourselves in trying to enslave the blacks, I do not want this. Give me liberty or give me death. In a spiritual dimension, especially for you and me, what is Paul saying? That there is a greater liberty than liberty. And this is the liberty of your true self. What is that liberty of your true self? The liberty of the heart, the mind, the conscience, the spirit, and will. This liberty of the heart, mind, conscious, spirit, and will should be free of all the bondages that trap us. Today, there could be bondages of the law. Today, there are bondages of culture. There are bondages of the consumeristic world. These are attracting us. And so, Paul says, be careful for freedom. Christ has set us free. Therefore, and do not the do not to a yoke. He goes, we are all the time being tempted to submit ourselves to He used to have it. and the letter. It's coming. It's coming. about this uh, person who had credit cards, and then he was encouraged by that company with a letter saying that you are one of our most valued customers. We would like to raise your buying power by one lakh rupees. While he was overjoyed, uh, he forgot that that was the day he had to make his usual nominal payment for the month. So while he was enjoying that his buying powers were enhanced, he forgot to make the usual nominal payment to the credit company. So, lo and behold, in the next morning, he got another letter 
from the credit card company and they said that you have defaulted on making your monthly payment of 400 rupees and therefore you must be careful of the consequences of your irresponsibility action will be taken against you first day action or delay payment of the If you look at our world of advertisements, movies and videos, you will notice that the viewers are attracted to indulge in the pleasures of the world, pleasures of sex, pleasures of alcohol. So that's one side. But in the same society, you are also warned by uh, different uh, instructions that come in. And what is it? Warned about AIDS, warned about drinking while driving. So this world is giving us mixed signals. Enjoy the world. Enjoy the world of sex. Enjoy the world of alcohol. On the other hand, be careful of AIDS. Be careful of driving when you are drunk. So a world of mixed signals. And it is in this context that Paul is saying, do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, be servants of one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is what we are called to be, people of service to society. Now, it's very difficult to explain what does it mean, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus gives us one, one good insight in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, where Jesus says, do to others what you would like them to do for you. This is significant. Do to others what you would like them to do for you. If you would like others not to cheat you, you should also not cheat them. If you would like others to be compassionate to you, you also ought to be compassionate to them. So do to others what you would like them to do to you. Very often we talk about love your neighbor as yourself. But as I have said once earlier, it is not you should love your neighbor as yourself. Rather, your neighbor should say to you, you have been a good neighbor to me. Your neighbor should say to you, you have been a good neighbor to me. And so, Paul concludes by saying, but I say, walk by the spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the spirit and the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, and so on. This is what we are called to exercise in our country. One very well-known Christian, uh, 
he was well known because he was very generous very compassionate and his generosity did not have any limits and so people asked him how do you manage this your generosity has no limits any time you see people in need you respond to their need this famous leader he said when i was a boy i worked in my family grocery store and in that family grocery store i was instructed how i should deal with customers i should never ask a customer is that all rather i should ask the customer isn't there anything else is that all it's a limit isn't there anything else there are boundaries to be drawn to be crossed and greater and greater works to be done and so this day as we celebrate independence day let us be grateful to the god of history and as we are grateful to the god of history let us also be responsible people of love and compassion people of duty and faithfulness so that do our lives all people around us would be blessed amen